Uh, g'day folks, uh, Glenn Twiddle here, and um, apologies for wearing the headset and wearing a dodgy t-shirt because I didn't have time. Uh, it's crazy busy around here, which is a great problem to have, but what it means is you get unprofessional Glenn in a t-shirt. But I just wanted to weigh in on uh, Todd Matheson. Look, this is an age-old debate, and you know what? No one is right and no one is wrong because you can make both methods of sale work. But I did just want to have a talk about the debate auction versus private trading. Uh, this is my two bobs. Now, first off, I'm going to play auction advocate for a moment. I'm just going to say, um, in a rising market, I've never yet seen a private treaty, even when it's under multiple offers and under um, under uh, competition, like I'm going to describe in a moment, which is why I favour private treaty. But even under the best private treaty conditions, very rarely will you have a property that, with a price on it that was, say, 900000 that's going to go through competitive bidding uh, for 1.2, 1.3 million. And that's certainly what we saw. In fact, that particular case study, an extra 400 odd thousand, was achieved by a colleague of mine some years ago. They were expecting, they had a reserve of 900, ended up getting 1.3 million. That's not going to happen if you've got a property listed at 900,000, even if you've got 10 offers doing multiple offers. You're not going to get an extra $400,000 on an eight or 900,000 dollar property. So in a market like that, with a property like that, um, for whatever reason, auction is never going to be beaten by private treaty. But that being said, in most other markets, I'm going to say that I'm a big fan of private treaty for really a bunch of reasons. And, and all the auction people, the pro-auction people are going to be saying, oh, this old chestnut. But it's a biggie and it's valid. And, um, you know, the, the buyer number one who buys the property has to pay because he's bidding against a known quantity and that there's someone on the other side of the room with their hand up. He pays $100 more than buyer number two, and he buys the property. And what if his capacity and desire to buy the property meant there was more money in him? Now, I understand that in the hands of a good uh, negotiating auctioneer, uh, like, you know, again, Dane Atherton and Jason Andrew and uh, uh, Phil Parker, those guys are geniuses. You know, so that's the first thing. If you're going to be auctioning, you better get one of those genius negotiators on your side because they're worth their weight in gold. You can get them for four or $500. Um, just the best four or five hundred dollars you'll spend in your marketing campaign. But, um, but, but, so that's number one is that buyer A pays a thousand dollars more than buyer B and he wins the property when buyer A might have had another ten or twenty or thirty grand in them if they were bidding against an unknown quantity. See, here's my thing with private treaty. I still like many of the elements of the auction method of sale. I love the fact that we set a deadline. So what we do is we set it up so that whenever we get a person that's interested in the property, we make sure that we are trying our darndest to get multiple offers. And under best application, we want those multiple offers to be signed up by someone different in the office so that we can say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that other offer is being signed up by one of the best negotiators. In fact, he's better at it than me. And what he's saying to them is, I need you to pay the highest price. And then they pull out the REIQ in Queensland, acknowledgement of multiple offers forms. And, um, and, and then we go down that path. You know, the other offers being signed up by that other bloke, I don't know what it is, but I tell you what, they're being signed up by a great negotiator. In fact, I had this lovely lady called Manuela do this once, and she said very humbly, you know, the other guy who signed up that offer, he's so much better at it than me. He's been in the business for 30 years. I used to work for him. He's my ex-boss. And she ended up getting a better offer by like tens of thousands of dollars than her ex-boss by being humble like that. It was brilliant and masterful. Yet under the auction method of sale, that, that buyer would have paid you know, 20 bucks more than their first buyer, and that was, you know, like I said, 30 or 40 grand difference or something. So that's reason number one. But you know the biggie? Reason number two that I prefer the private treaty method of sale is that there are a bunch of buyers, and I embarrassedly am going to say I'm one of them, that when there's not a, a price on a property, and that includes auction, if I see auction on a property, and I've bought a bunch of properties over the years, I've never yet even looked or inquired upon a property that says auction because I'm one of those little princesses. I love having my little 14-day safety net. Even if I could buy under auction circumstances, unconditional 10% and all that, even if I could buy under those conditions, I don't want to. I want my little safety net. And it seems that depending on the area, there's about half of the population that won't buy under auction conditions. So my argument is this. If half of the buyers won't even inquire, then surely how is that getting the best price for our uh, our sellers? Surely we want all of the market, even the little princesses like me who want their uh, finance clause, they want their little safety net for 14 days. Um, I, I, I want to have those people 
in the mix as well. Now, of course, in the auction method of sale, you might be saying that after the 30 days and we have our auction day, then of course those conditional buyers are welcome to buy it after auction day. And I understand that that might be the argument. But, um, you know, the fact is that if the sellers in many areas, and I'm certainly speaking for many Southeast Queensland sellers, if the sellers don't like it and you can get a, uh, you know, one of my clients, Chris Gilmore, his argument against auction is takes too long. My average sale time is 18 days and all auctions are about double that. So bugger that, I'm just going to get them sold, you know. So th there's that argument as well. But that's not as big an argument, at least in my opinion, than the hidden nature of bidding privately and that's this is all legal it's not that this is below board or anything or it's a, a, a dutch auction these met the method of of um of doing multiple offers and keeping the bids uh, quiet and and uh confidential from the parties is the way the reoq's legal team's best practice advise us to do it that they advise us to keep these things confidential even between fellow salespeople. So um, uh, to me, there's no argument against that, plus the fact that half the buyers won't even inquire if they don't have a price or a price indication. I do have some, you know, I'd like to see more information about how McGrath do it with an auction and give a price indicator. I, I haven't really studied that too much, but I understand that that's a valid way that the McGrath team get their message across. So, look, there's my two bobs on auction, but I, I do go back to what I said before. I've got some great clients who are auction advocates who are brilliant at using the auction method of sale to get results for their client. My, my, my bottom line is, whatever method of sale you're going to do, be brutally well-trained in your scripting, your dialoguing, be magnificent at whatever you are doing, and it just happens that my preferred method of doing, showing that magnificence and showing those negotiation skills and show, and getting those high prices is through the private treaty method of sale, preferably when we get multiple offers. Because just like auction, auction in its best application works when there's more than one person bidding on the property. Well, that's what we want with multiple offers as well. And I just like the private nature of that uh, when we're doing our, our, our business because that private nature, the, each of these parties, they're bidding against their own desire to own the property and an unknown rather than a, than a known quantity. Now, I've had some auction people and they're very right in saying that the auction method of sale is more transparent. Well, you know what? Our sellers don't pay us for transparency. Our, our sellers pay us to get the highest amount of money where, where it's legal, fair, and uh, what's uh, in the code of our code of conduct in Queensland says we've got to be legal, honest, and fair. Uh, and and so as long as we're legal and all uh, legal, that's what the legal people say we should be doing. Um, honest, well we are being honest. If we don't know what that other offer is, and we say I don't know what that other offer is, but the person that's signing it up is a great negotiator, that's being honest. And so so long as within the bounds of that honesty and fairness. We have to do the most to get our our sellers the most money possible, not to be transparent to buyers. So there's um you know that's my take on it. You know that um and it's based on some legal uh you know thinking. I want us to be playing within the rules of the code of conduct. And one of those things in that code of conduct says the highest price possible, not a thousand dollars more than the second highest price possible which is really what happens in under many circumstances under the auction method of sale. All right, let the flaming commence. I'm sure you guys have got just as hearty and passionate a debate for the auction method of sale as I've got for the way that works for us. There's lots of ways to, to be right. One of my mentors many years ago said to me, there's lots of ways to skin a cat. And there are lots of ways to, to skin a cat, lots of ways to be right in this. But I hope my uh, uh, take on this hasn't been offensive to Toddy. It certainly hasn't. I don't mean to say uh, Toddy's wrong because uh, I wouldn't want to do that to my mate Toddy. But uh, that's just my take. I hope that's been of some help. So I'm Glenn Twiddle. Bye.